Welcome everyone to this new episode of the Privacy Rules Privacy Espresso series. My name is Alessandro Mattia, Legal and Executive Officer at Privacy Rules. Uh, and today we are joined by Sara Kanatachi from the law firm Fennec and Fennec in Malta. Because as you know, with Privacy Espresso, we deal with privacy and data protection matters together with our experts from all over the world. First of all, I would like to thank Sara for being with us today. So thanks for being here, Sara. Thank you, Alessandro, for the invitation. It's, it's my pleasure. And, you know, the, the topic of today is not a topic that is specifically related just to Malta, but it's something broader, let's say, uh, that is the one related to use of artificial intelligence, like ChatGPT, to give you an example, and privacy and, uh, and data protection. Uh, so, Sarah, I would like to, to, to ask you, starting with a GDPR perspective, can you give us some uh, tips and indication on uh, what's the matter? And maybe we can tailor it to the key data protection principles that we have under GDPR. Yes, of course. So, as you rightly said, artificial intelligence and protection of personal data go hand in hand, especially where you have AI systems that will process personal data. Uh, the data protection principles that are established under the GDPR are also reflected in a lot of different legislation around the world. So this discussion, as you said, also has applicability in, in, in other jurisdictions worldwide. So when we think about the data protection principles, one of the questions that comes to mind is that is the way that current AI systems being built and, and being applied compliant with these data protection principles. So if we look at uh, the first principle, lawfulness, uh, fairness, and transparency. First off, you know, if you look at the news out there, we already are seeing proceedings on the basis of claims of copyright infringement, where these um, large learning models, LLMs, as I like to refer to them, uh, such as ChatGPT, for example, the way they work is that they collect a lot of information that can be inclusive of pers personal data so that they can learn and be able to generate replies depending on, on the prompts that are being put into the system. So lawfulness, there's already that issue there. But when it comes to personal data, we also need to think about how that data was originally collected. So just because I gave my personal data to a company and that information has been made available somewhere or another online, it does not mean that the use of it by the LLM is lawful. When it comes to fairness and the issue of, of lawfulness, I'll also come into it when I talk about the principle of integrity and confidentiality. The issue of transparency. I don't think that there's anywhere anyone out there that can say that AI systems are transparent. We, we don't really have any information that we can understand about the criteria that is being used by these systems as to how our data is being used. Issue of fairness and you know, we can also touch on this later on, but there is an issue of inherent bias within the discussion of AI systems. And therefore, if AI systems are biased, how can we say also that therefore this principle of fairness is being complied with? Because, you know, if the system is being prejudicial to certain individuals out there, then that is difficult to satisfy. When it comes to accuracy, there have been plenty of cases already out there where there is a breach of contextual integrity. So if my personal data has been processed by a company for a specific purpose, if the system is you know, scraping that information from the internet without the context within which it was given, there can be therefore this breach of contextual integrity, which can cause reputational harm. In fact, there had been a, a case where ChatGPT falsely accused an American law professor of sexual harassment. It also, you know, cited a non-existent uh, report from the Washington Post. And also there, there were different cases, for example, in the promotional video created for BARD, uh, which is another um, large language model, giving inaccurate answers about uh, the James Webb uh, Space Telescope. So when it comes to accuracy, there's this integral issue, I would say, that, that might be problematic when it comes to complying with data protection principles. At the same time, and as I referenced before, the issue of integrity and confidentiality, it has been established in a lot of different studies that uh, a data extraction attack on a large language language model can easily be undertaken and this through querying uh, the the system and this data extraction attack therefore would be a breach in the context of of the gdpr at the same time as i mentioned before you know the scraping from the internet can also constitute a breach of 
contextual integrity, which you can therefore categorize under a breach of integrity um, and confidentiality under the GDPR. Last, something else that we can discuss further in detail, the issue of accountability, the silent um, data protection principle. Who is responsible? Will it be the user? Will it be the organizations behind the development of the system itself? So yeah, that is one of my biggest worries, and I think it should be a worry as well for, for users out there as to how to make sure that when they are processing personal data through AI systems, that they are still complying with the, the data protection principles. And thanks a lot. And it's so many points to consider. Yeah. I was even taking notes and it's, it's hard just to take notes. So even more difficult for it to stay behind. And I think one, one of the key things that emerged by listening to you on this is probably many cases, what is missing is the so-called privacy by design, meaning that many of those companies in building up the system are not considering data protection since the very beginning. And this is an issue because then recovery, when you already have lots of data, it's almost impossible. So a good thing to let people know and be aware about the risks of using AI and do it, doing it in the, in the right way. And so, you know, carefully consider all those things with lawyers as you are that are experienced and knows what, what to look at. So thanks a lot for that. And you were mentioning two key points in that regard. And, and the last one is the one of accountability and, and the legal personality. So who are the people responsible for this? So who are the first ones that should check and make sure that everything is working right? Yes, so this discussion of legal personality or at least accountability, it's a problem in a lot of, in most legal systems uh, because when, when we talk about liability, liability attaches itself to a legal person, right? So it can be a company, you know, a company has a right to own property, has a right to sue, to be sued, take decisions. But right now, AI does not have legal personality. And therefore, that system cannot take certain decisions or at least decisions that are legally enforceable or you can't find the system liable. So if you have a situation where that output of the LLM is problematic, incorrect, or the use of it can cause that user to be found liable for something, how is that going to be addressed? Within the context of the EU, the, the proposal for the AI Act requires the implementation of human oversight into each system. So that alone already complicates the discussion because we have, you know, this, this regulation was just saying that you need to have this human oversight. And will that therefore translate into liability for the developers who are ensuring the human oversight? Is it the, you know, it, it, <laughs> once we get into it, 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 it's a Pandora's box. So that is also something which I think users should keep in mind, as well as developers, because as you mentioned, ensuring privacy by design, ensuring compliance with the data protection principles. If there isn't um, this compliance, who is going to be responsible, right? Because really and truly within the EU at least, if there are certain breaches when it comes to the processing of personal data or the system itself under the provisions of the AI Act, there can be liability both under the GDPR and the AI Act as well. So it's important to see who is responsible because, you know, who's going to be paying any fines ultimately. That's that's very interesting. Thanks a lot. And, you know, the more we move on, the more we have other, you know, issues that, that, that comes up. Um, one of which was, as you say, is the one of automated decision-making and biases. So that's another key point that maybe you would like to delve a bit more into. Of course. So bias is a, a problematic <laughs> factor in the, in the discussion of, of AI, I would say. AI systems can be used to facilitate a lot of decisions in various sectors. But because there is this issue of inherent bias, right, having these systems taking these decisions can lead to the creation of an unacceptable risk to these individuals and therefore have a situation where you might be, um, you know, a controller who is trying to not implement the bias, but the system itself 
through the inherent bias might not allow you to do that. And therefore, there needs to be further controls on that front. As you mentioned as well, under the GDPR, we have the right to not be subject to a decision based solely on automated processing. The issue there is how can this be enforced against AI systems where these micro decisions are happening all the time? At the same time, you also have the issue that where you are saying, I don't want the, the system to take a decision about me, how then are you going to make sure that you stop the system from taking the decision? How are you going to make sure that the controller is taking that decision? So <laughs> it becomes problematic. And one of the issues that we're seeing is that the GDPR is setting out this, this right where there is no significant human intervention. We have that wording, but then we have the wording that I mentioned before of the AI Act, which talks about human oversight. Are we talking about two different concepts when we talk about human oversight and human intervention? And <laughs> yeah, just... yeah, it's it, it's. I mean, and and you know, and there is one more thing that that again, I, by listening to you, uh, pops up that is the, the data subject rights. You were saying, you know, once those information are in, what what can we do? Of course, it, it, it seems like those systems are not capable then to retrieve those data, to change them, or to even remove them. In my opinion, especially when it comes to data subject rights, the most problematic is the right to erasure. So right of access, potentially, because the system is meant to gather all this information, perhaps it would be something that can be uh, complied with. But when it comes to the right to erasure, if we're talking about going back to training data, if that system has been trained on data scraped from the internet, which might include personal data, and a data subject wants to exercise that right of erasure. Can that right be fulfilled when it comes to training data? Can the system forget this information? It becomes very complicated and you know, there are people out there who are not even using AI systems yet, and they find it to be a bit problematic to be able to fulfill those data subject rights within the systems they have. So before taking that leap, I would strongly suggest that users particularly look into those capabilities. And for the developers, as you mentioned before, privacy by design, one of the things that these developers need to think about is ensuring that the system can be able to fulfill those rights. One last thing that I think would be of interest for our audience, as you mentioned, uh, of course, the AI Act um, as well, which are the, the, the set of rules and what should they keep an eye on when handling this type of uh, platform? So the GDPR, you know, everyone knows about the territorial scope there, but the AI Act will apply to providers placing on the market or putting in the, the availability of a service of AI systems within the EU right? Irrespective of whether those providers are actually established within the EU or not. It also applies to users of those systems within the EU. And lastly, AI Act will also apply to providers and users of those AI systems outside of the EU, where the output of the AI systems will have an effect or is used within the EU. And that is something, you know, very, very broad. But besides the AI Act itself, I would strongly suggest to the people following, whether they are developers or users, to bear in mind that the AI hype is a global phenomenon. So we're seeing a lot of jurisdictions working on draft legislation to regulate the use and development of AI systems. And certain jurisdictions like Japan have also pursued a different approach in that they have issued guidelines. In Malta, for example, the government announced its AI strategy as far back as 2018. And over the years, the relevant authority has also issued different mechanisms, different setups to aid developers. So we have established a technology assurance sandbox for developers to be able to develop these AI systems in a way that is compliant with the law. They're also looking into launching in the coming months a technology assurance assessment framework. So there you would have more of a certification aspect. So there are a lot of jurisdictions out there that are establishing their own pieces of the framework. So besides all of the stuff that we've you know, been discussing from a GDPR or data protection aspect, users and developers should also become more informed about the other regulations that exist, including the AI Act, of course, and different um, national legislation that will be applicable. Perfect. 
sort of thanks a lot. Uh, it becomes out a very complex patchwork that, that it's advisable to, to our listeners to get in touch with experts that all, also have connection with other experts all over as you are, but be a member of, of this alliance because then, you know, like in the EU, to give you an example, you have like, let's say, a basic general law, but then you have to go deeper. Country exactly. By country. So thanks a lot. There would be probably much more to say that would for take sure. hours. <laughs> thanks to our listeners for being with us. So look forward to meeting you with our next Travis Espresso. Bye, Sarah, and bye, everybody. Thank you.